What's up, Jason? How you doing? I'm good, Ivan. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Oh, this is officially my first podcast. Really? You're the first guest. Right on. Thanks for coming, buddy. Of course. Um, I want to kick off this with uh, just asking you right away. Like, I know that you had a pretty cool big race a few weeks ago. Um, how was that? Just tell me about that. Well, um, I mean, I guess for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jason Scherer, and I uh, race in the Ultra Four Series for King of the Hammers. And... Uh, you know, we just got back from, I guess it was our, our 12th year of racing King of the Hammers, um, and we we won, which was amazing. I mean, it was a totally incredible. That's your second year in a row, right? <clears throat> yeah, it was a back-to-back -back win, um, our third win in total out there, um, and, uh, you know, something I'm really proud of, it was our fourth podium in a row. So, you know, you've got a race with 120 different cars in our class, um, and that class is like the unlimited class, and... Um, you know, after qualifying near the front of the field, like for about the last six years, we've, you know, gone out there and given it our best and we've managed to pull off, uh, you know, four podiums, back to back wins here. And, uh, you know, it's really, the racing's really competitive. It's, uh, I mean, it, it might sound like it's not if we're doing that well, but it's because we're putting a, a lot of effort into yeah, yeah. it on all, on all aspects, you know? That's pretty cool. I was I was watching a, a video the other day because I was trying to like you know, uh, of course I like to watch your your race and I was following you. I was watching live when you were winning and I was super excited for you and the whole family was there. It was pretty cool. But uh, um, I was I was watching like a little bit of the highlights of like what these vehicles can do. Oh yeah, it's pretty crazy. And I and we talked about this before you and me, but uh, um, how like the demand on your physical ability to be able to just drive this vehicle, like just. Uh, how like how what does it take to for you guys to build a car like i don't know much about cars and vehicles like this but if you can explain a little bit like about your vehicle first what it what it takes to like kind of put it together and 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 what um what you know the kind of technology you guys have in it and then after that like the demand uh it takes for you to like be able to just drive it for that long well i mean in it it's such a detailed question it's such a great question and it, there's so much to it so uh first of all the cars are going at speeds I don't think people really envision that they'd be going this soon into like kind of a new racing series and the reason that the series is different is it's everything that a desert race was like the Baja 1000 it has all those aspects that where you're going 120 to 130 miles an hour across dry lake beds 100 miles an hour plus through three foot tall whoops where you're just you know slamming through stuff and the suspension's just you know yeah. like crazy all the way down to these very technical trails called the hammers trails where you're you're actually we winched four different times i mean my co-driver that rides along with me he navigates us through the course and then he has a specific job he uh you know he's a crossfit guy he's, yeah he's uh he owns a gym the, right yeah, he owns dreamtown crossfit and Truckee, and uh you know he hopped out we actually had a spot during the race where he hopped out and another guy hopped out and they literally had a foot race to who could hook the winch uh, faster and i was like who oh, won crossfit wins, bro. <laughs> crossfit wins you know nice. so he got up there first took that winch and we made a pass while winching like i mean you're going 120 through the desert and we passed somebody pulling ourselves up with a worn winch like, yeah like it's crazy that's, that crazy. that's you know like what yeah, it comes totally. down to and that was the pass for the lead you know it was a one mile an hour differential when that's really cool top. so but, yeah i was i was watching it it almost seems like it, you don't you don't really realize right because i was i was talking to somebody the other day and i was telling about it and, and uh you even when you're watching right you don't really realize how fast the vehicles go and the terrain that they're driving over, it doesn't seem like it's, it's smooth at all. Like, it's not. No, I mean, it would be like, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that's hard to imagine is it's like if you took a one-lane road that you normally drive, the speed limit on a one-lane road, I mean, it could be 55, but normally it's probably like a 35-mile-an-hour zone, right? And we're going to go through that same zone. You take away the pavement. You let the water deteriorate the road till you've got potholes and ruts all over the place. And then you say, okay, most people maybe. 50 would be fast on a 35 mile an hour road yeah, yeah. and take away the pavement. We're going to go 110 through it and we're going to change directions and we're driving in the guy's dust in front of us and we're trying to see where we can pass him by peeling out into something that's actually rougher because it's not the road. So you probably can't see. You probably <laughs> oh. can't see. You know, 
I drive what I can see still. Yeah. I mean, the, these kids, they're starting to drive what they can't see. They're just a little bit crazier than us. Is it know? just what, like, just look at the GPS and kind of like... Yeah, we look at the GPS. There's a red line on it, and, uh, you know, you can zoom in to a certain point where you think you can, you know, drive by staying on that line, but, man, it's a fine line. Like, it is, it is, yeah. Try to drive 100 miles an hour and never look at the road and look at a GPS screen. It's like, yeah, I don't, it's not for me. Yeah, I, yeah. The next generation, though, they're starting to do that already, but um, the cars are cool. The speeds are crazy the engineering behind the cars like we put in a ton of prep so i got a team of guys um they're the best guys in the field in my opinion and and they've proven it after what they've done i think um they prep that car to be able to go through and battle it out it's insane what they have to do i mean it's not just tires and brakes right it's they change out the axles the differentials the drive lines the transfer cases they change all those hard parts out just between like qualifying and race day so that the car's fresh yeah. so that we can go out there and have everything in perfect condition to start the race. And then, you know, they're doing fuel pit stops and tires and all that. Like luckily we've had two years in a row with the BF Goodrich tires, no flats, like just go That's race. Pretty the crazy. That's pretty cool. It is crazy. But you know, the components on all the people who are making the components now, like parts of the vehicle, they all have the pride in wanting to have them finish the race and not break yeah so everything's stepping up right everybody's putting in the engineering effort so the cars are cool and then it just leaves the two guys that are in the car i mean we're really like the last two parts of the yeah. picture right the cars are incredible the terrain and the racetrack are incredible how are we going to do physically in the car and i think we've done what we can do to get ourselves yeah i mean I, every day i'm trying to get better yeah yeah you know and, and i love that part of of it but i feel like you know there's there's a reason that like maybe a lot of the guys that have won the race have won it over and over again. And, and I mean, one of them is, you know, I had a good friend of mine, um, big CrossFit guy up in, uh, up in the Orville area. He told me, he said, you know, you don't really have to be in great physical condition, but you have to be pretty damn tough and, yeah, and you have to be able to take that beating. But I, I thought about it and, and he's right. And you can't take a physical beating if you're not in good shape. No, totally. You, you know, and what happens is, is you get beat enough in there, you know, just taking, you're taking some hits and, and those hits are just, you know, it's like a, kind of like a boxer. You get the wind knocked out of you. It's not that bad, but like you get the wind knocked out of you like the 30th time. It starts oh, to man. drain on you a little bit. Right. So if you, if you keep getting those just, <gasps> you know, motions, it, it can start to wear you down. And I think how you can kind of deal with that is, you know, if you, if you're not getting mentally distraught from that physical abuse. Oh. That shows you what kind of condition you're in. Like that's the really yeah, good yeah. test of your conditioning because you're not letting that abuse kind of beat you down and take you take advantage of you. Because as soon as you start to get that feeling of being beat, I swear you start making mental mistakes. Oh, totally. I so mean, you, you know, you miss you a little bit. And... Yeah, you go a little too fast because you're frustrated. You, yeah. you push a little too hard, or 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 the opposite happens. You fall off the pace. Yeah, I mean that's the worst thing, right? You're racing and you fall off, and you the start pace. slowing down, and yep. yeah, yeah, start hesitating. Uh, why and... would you want to have him more beating? You know, go slower. Yeah, and exactly. Back. Yeah. So, so, so you are you're driving there with your with your uh, co-driver, right? And then his name is Jason. Too, Jason Burger, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I I think I, I met him a couple of times. Yeah, great. And guy. Uh, um, so when when you guys are, you know, you both do CrossFit. Yep. Right, you both do CrossFit. You do CrossFit. He's at a much higher level. <laughs> he owns a gym on. Uh, is this Chucky or Tahoe? Tahoe City. It's Trucky. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, Dreamtown. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, it's the great name for Trucky. I love it. And, yeah. Um. You know, he he, he was, was on to plays there. You know, and I, I just I love his story too because, you know, he's been my friend for you know twenty years. We snowmobiled together. We yeah. jeeped together on the Rubicon trails. He would. Uh, he ran this thing called Disabled Sports where he would take these kids out. Um, that were disabled and take them onto the Rubicon Trail, take them snowmobile and do all this stuff. That's He's so just cool. a really good dude. Yeah. Uh, became a CrossFit coach because he really fell in love with CrossFit. He ended up selling the transportation business and and starting his own. Really? Yeah, starting his own box up in uh, Truckee. And and uh, he, you know he gets a lot out of coaching. He like loves to see people's progression. That's so cool. Um, he's done neat things with the teenagers where he lets them join the gym without even paying. They yeah. just have to make a promise that they'll they'll do something to give back to the community for being yeah, able to totally, go. Yeah. And, uh, he's just, he's got it going on, but he's my balance in the car. Like he's, there's magic in racing. Like you see it between like NASCAR drivers and their crew chiefs. When they hit on all cylinders, nobody can beat them. You see like the Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals thing. They go yeah. and win seven championships. Five of them were back to back. Like you're like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? And, and for some reason, the two of us in that car is like comfortable with the ability to push each other with the ability to like have respect for each other. And then a cool head when shit's going wrong because stuff goes wrong in racing. Like it's not yeah, always no, what totally. you plan. You know, we had a guy roll over that was a lapper. We were in the lead. 
we know that the guy in seconds coming on us and the guy in front of us rolls over and blocks oh, the yeah. trail and it's like how do you deal with that stuff that calmness under pressure to like well here's the situation here's the cards we're dealt now let's handle it with yeah. the best plan we can you know go with and and he's he is the best at that i mean it's that's just all crazy. business in that situation that's pretty cool yep. yeah so like going back to to um you know, you and Jason, you know, like doing both of you guys do CrossFit. So how much do you think about, so how, how many, how many days a week, a week do you, do you work out? Do you probably five average, right? You got to take the CrossFit class and work I, I, out try to, I mean, I, I would like to come in on weekends, but you know, I'd rather spend time with the family. So totally. otherwise I, I, every day every during day, the week, yeah. you know? So is there, besides your training, right? Like you, I know you've been pretty consistent and, and uh, prior to the raise, you were trying to make sure that you, you get physically strong too and, and get in good shape um, uh, for the raise. Um, is there anything else you do besides, you know, practice in the vehicle ride and working out that you do to prepare yourself for something like this? Um, there is. And, and I think, you know, I, I think diet plays a huge role in it. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of things, right? Like, uh, it's really easy for me to do. So like, it's two totally different things. One's the diet thing. And one's like staying on your schedule and getting the sleep and, and working yeah. out because okay. there's, there's this thing that happens right before a big race, right? We, we go to these races and, and there's a short time frame. There's a short window about where the race course is going to go. I mean, they hand us a GPS chip on Friday afternoon and they tell us on Friday or sorry, Friday morning, but Friday and Saturday and Monday, you guys can be out on the race course. So you don't really have a lot of time. I mean, you can, you can try to guess and so go there. Protected, right? So you have to be a hundred percent prepared when you show up there for everything that's going to go, because that first minute that they've handed you that thing, it's like a timer's on. And the more you learn, the more homework you do, the better you go out there and do it, the more prepared you are for the race. And so, and the reason it's like that is they have other classes and they have qualifying, they have all these other events going on on the race course that, yeah. are, that are not our class. So it's, it's, that's our, our window's very short. Okay. So, you know, when you get there, I, I kept my schedule all the way up until the day we left. I was still coming to CrossFit. I was still eating the same stuff. Yeah. I was still trying to go to bed at a reasonable hour. I mean, I called the guys off at the shop a few times. I'm like, guys, it's 1030 or 11 o'clock at go, night. Go home. We know yeah. we can work until four in the morning, but it's garbage after this. It's garbage time. Let's go home. Let's come back in here fresh. And we did it even during the race week, you know, prepping the car, getting ready. I'm like, go to bed. Let's do it in the morning. Like this is, we know how so that important, balance how, how boring it is. Because yeah. you can turn into a zombie and zombies make terrible decisions, right? Totally. Diet is a whole nother part. And, you know, it's, it's not my choice. A lot of things aren't always your choice in life. you right. You get cards, you've dealt with them. Yeah. Life isn't fair. You, you handle what you get. I went in and thought I was being doing the right thing. I'd been uh, pretty much full paleo for six years. And, you know, unfortunately, the numbers don't lie. I hadn't done any blood work. I was young enough. I thought, oh, I don't need to do blood work right now. Turned 40, said, okay, I'll go in and get my blood work done. And they're like, whoo. So this is pretty interesting, right? Because there's a ton of people more like in the kind of CrossFit world, right, that we are in, that uh, the people are like, oh, I'm going to go paleo, right? But I've seen it through the years where like I have, you know, clients and, and, and members in the gym where like sometimes people don't understand what really – paleo it's about right and how to do it right because you can totally do paleo wrong right you can do it wrong and so how do what did, what did you what were you doing during your paleo time that you you think you probably which is not well i know for, for sure you. like i probably abused the bacon like yeah you know <laughs> a pound of bacon a day in the morning i mean yeah <laughs> you can carry away you know anything you want in this whole thing right you can make it more i don't know that that was like my only thing i still think that there is some part of all of these diet, all the brands, all the stuff. And it's like, well, individuals process things differently. Yeah. If my body doesn't process, we could eat the exact same thing. My cholesterol level goes up higher than totally. yours. It's just what my body processes. Exactly. Yeah. And you have to listen to your body, right? You have to say, okay, for some reason, genetics, uh, whatever it might be, my body didn't process the cholesterol as well. Call my dad, you know, my mom's passed away. So I, I, I no info there really call my dad. Hey, you know, what's your cholesterol? The history, you know? and the and and you, yeah. you know, he's like, Oh, I've taken statins for 30 years. I'm like, well, okay, I can see where <laughs> this is going to go. So, you know, there's probably part of it. Who knows what my mom's side's like, but I bet it's not any better of a story. Cause yeah. I mean, I have high cholesterol. So, and high triglycerides, which were probably, you know, it, that's interesting. I don't know. I mean, was it because I was eating some of the food with more processed stuff and I didn't, you know, who knows, was it where I was getting and sourcing everything? But either way, I had that. I'm bacon's full of triglycerides, but um, I decided, okay, I had a choice to make. Yeah, I could try to go on the. I could, I could just go on the statins, right? But I, which I want, most people do, right? Most people are just like, oh, that's what my doctor says. I'm gonna just do it. And right? I think I get why the doctor would even recommend. I mean, like, 
Western medicine, take it for a little yeah. bit, but not everybody's going to stick to that. I mean, there's, there's people with willpower and there's people that are like, well, I'll do this diet yeah. for a while. It's not a lifestyle. It's, I'm going to do this diet for a while. And then they fall off of it and they're back with their high cholesterol. Even if it didn't fix it or did fix it or whatever, they can't stick to it. Well, I had a decision to say, well, I'm going to try to do it without the statins. And I mean, actually the doctor really didn't like it. I mean, literally she's like, it's not going to work because if you, if you totally change your diet, it may be, it's going to make a 20% difference. If you went from 360 on your cholesterol and drop, you're going to get to like 280. 280 i'm sticking so with statins yeah. like you didn't need it so i was like okay i'm gonna do it anyway though because i am you know maybe i'm hard-headed but i was like well it's three and a half months at 42 years old or yeah. four, I, sorry i was back then i was 40 years old what's what's a uh, what's three and a half months gonna do if i go exactly vegan, yeah, yeah. Right? so you i said okay, well i gotta cut out dairy right? and I, I didn't do vegan because i was like i'm gonna go vegan it was like nope i'm cutting out dairy i'm cutting out all meat I guess I'm vegan, right? It was like a, a, a byproduct yeah, exactly, of what I yeah. was cutting out of my diet that had cholesterol in it. So it was back down to just eating plant-based proteins, you know, plant-based foods. Here I go. Three and a half months later, I walked in there, I got the blood test, and I remember the doctor saying, like, huh, if I wasn't reading these, I wouldn't have believed it. Because it was down to 116. Triglycerides had dropped, like, you know, That's by pretty half. impressive. Everything was, like, looking better. My blood pressure wasn't, like, you know, super bad, but it wasn't, you know, it yeah. had actually gotten even lower from that, which, you know, that who knows if it's that, you know, syndrome where you go into the doctor and I've been in a long time, your blood pressure's up a little bit. I don't know. I mean, but it was, everything came down, and then I tried to go pescatarian because I was like, well, if I got it down to 116, maybe I can, you know, eat some Introduce some, like, cleaner, cleaner proteins, right? And, I mean... I think you've been with me. I love the poke bowls. Oh, yeah. I love sushi. Like I was like, oh, totally. sweet, I can have sushi. And you know what? It went right back up. Not right. No, it didn't go up nearly as high. But it went back. Well, you up. can see that it actually was still <sighs> raising. You know, and I I went quite a while with that. I probably went eight months with that. Yeah. And I decided okay, after I got my next blood work done, you know, I guess it was a year that I went back in for the review, and it was back up. I was like, damn, I got to go back to the full vegan thing. Um, and and that's a bummer a little bit because I enjoyed it. But it, it is, like I said, life isn't fair. Sometimes you have to go exactly, do what yeah. you have to do. Yeah. And I did it, and I feel like, okay, so I took care of diet. My co-driver and I take care of, um, you know, doing everything we can to be as physically fit. And, and, and this is our choice of how to do it. I mean, I don't feel like there's, you know, it's weird. What's, what's the longest CrossFit workout you've ever done? I mean, the, 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 you know, realistically. like I mean, you know, once in a while, right, we do we do something that is like, Special location here, yeah. workout that is like thirty-five minutes, right? Oh. Thirty-five to forty minutes. I might have had right? a forty-five one here and there, right? Yeah, but you know, it's, it's my like, race is six and a half hours as a winning time. Why would this be good? Like, I could almost make a case that I should go mountain biking, road biking. Yes, you know, totally. There's a lot of things I should do that might be more realistic to the workout that I'm about to go engage in for the race. But for some reason, it has been the most perfect thing because you're accomplishing a goal. You're pacing yourself to get the work done over that amount of time that you can go do, you know, and it's the same thing. I mean, the flag drops at a race, three, two, one, go. It's the same exact yeah. thing. We're training ourselves to get into the zone of accomplishing that workout. And then during the race, I'm picking off the rock trails with the same feeling that I'm picking off a wad. I mean, I'm looking at it like maybe there's a buy-in of a 91 de mile desert loop. That's the buy-in. It's like the go do road. 2000 meters go yeah. run a mile now come back in and do this and then i take each one of those trails that we have to go up and they're check boxes boom i just knocked off those deadlifts just knocked off those yeah. pull-ups just knocked off those box jumps like keep knocking that chipping away at it and and the whole course feels to me like it's just a a, a continuation of an just of a like long one walk. of your workouts yeah, yeah and and then i get done and i'm like stoked now i mean timing it's totally different and and it's good because I mean, we've all screwed up in a wad, right? We've all blown it and just over. Start too fast. Guys, and we're <laughs> like, oh, I'm, heavy. I'm done. <laughs> you know, and then you try to pick up the pieces. But it, it's sort of similar. The more you learn about that, yeah. the better we pace for the race. And it's actually helped us because, you know, it might be three laps on this race. We go into that first lap. You don't win it on the first lap. Yeah, exactly. We're so much more calm. Guys are like, I'm going to, you know, drive like this and pass you around. You're like, go ahead. I'll see you like in 25, exactly, 30 minutes, yeah. right? And, and usually you do, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe one of those guys has a perfect day. He's going to beat you there, you know, but but you can't you can't sustain that consistently over and over again. Exactly, and so yeah. we, we save ourselves in the best that we can for like when it really matters. Third lap coming into the finish, like the last 50, 60 miles. Whereas we're, that's that like... Last round, guys, give it all you got. Yeah. You know, and if you got it, 
you, you can go. Yeah, if you so, don't wait yourself at the beginning, right? If yep. you actually like pace yourself, then you can actually go hard yeah. to finish up. And and it's, it's so it's almost the same. So for me, this is the best form of of trying to figure out a way to handle the race yeah. pace that that I could find. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, it has all the other benefits. Like, yeah. it's, it's a great thing. Yeah. You know, your wife's like, oh, you look good. You know, like, everything's yeah. good about it. Like, there's no downside exactly, to it. Exactly, yeah. You know? I talk about this with a lot of people and then tell them this. Like, it's like, people need to understand sometimes that, you know, CrossFit is not the only way to get in shape, right? That's not the only type of workout that is going to get you in shape and it's going to, you know, fix your health and, like, all this stuff, right? At the end of the day, you got to kind of, you know, find what you what what works for you, right? And according to what you do, maybe you can find what uh, fits best, right? And in this case, you, right, you're racing what you do. You know, it seems like the type of training on CrossFit you do, it translates really well to your racing, right? And it helps a lot, not just physically, but mentally, too. Well, yeah, I mean, both sides of it. And, and you know, it's interesting because um, as scalable as it is, I feel like it's a good workout for almost, like, anybody. Yeah. Like, everybody yeah, can win. Totally. And, and I, I get it even from, like, friends. I, I've had two different friends in, like, the last few months. Like, man, and it's because I think they know that you work out and they, like, they you know, they talk about it a little bit to you. And they're like, I'm going to start going to the gym and working out so I can come out and do CrossFit with you. I'm yeah. like, dude, you don't have to do that. Like you, you, we can start whenever you don't yeah. have to get in shape to start doing CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, and I, I hear it a lot, but like you know, there's no reason not just to come down and you know scale it to where you feel like good about what you're, you know, what you're doing. And and that's the best thing about like I've never met a single in, in any place I've ever gone because I mean we'll go on a road trip somewhere to a race. I mean, yeah. did you know this at the race that we went to? We ended up going down to Palm Springs. We were at this racetrack. And we had to go pick up our girls at the airport. They all flew in. Okay. The kids were in school. And we didn't want to take them out for the whole time we were down there practicing. Yeah, yeah. So we flew them all in. Jason Berger and I went to CrossFit. <laughs> Doing insane. No way. <laughs> so, you know, so you went to gym. a CrossFit gym over there. We went to a CrossFit gym. Just, yeah. How many days before the race? Uh, two days. You know, two days just, yeah. it was like Wednesday or yeah. something, right? And anyway, the reason I say it is like you go everywhere. You're never going to meet a coach that's not going to be like, here, let's scale it to your needs. You yeah. know, you're always going to find somebody that's like, I mean. For the most part, you, you most CrossFit gyms are going to be like that, right? I mean, yeah. the community is pretty big, but at the same time, pretty small, right? Yep. And um, everybody's nice where you go and everything. Once in a while, it's just like a, maybe a restaurant where you go and then you might have a bad experience somewhere, right? Because people are different. You're not going to find the same exact thing. But, you know, um, it was cool. You were able to just like, hey, let's go to a question. This one here. Let's go check it out. Let's do, get a workout in. And Yeah, and I mean, you know, even at that stage, like even when we're – you know, doing it every day and we're, we're there. You even think about stuff. You got a couple of days before the race and I know I, it beats up my, my shoulders and my arms. Yeah. So I tried to just limit what I was going to do with overhead stuff. You yeah. know, just kind of like, don't put any extra strain on because I'm going to be fighting, you know, tethered belts, pulling down on the harness For six device hours. And, and, and needing to get this really yeah. accurate little motor skill right here. Just perfect. And yeah. you're like, okay, don't go strain anything, yeah. you know, but, but totally. go get some, yeah. you know, extra. Cause I mean, you know, it's almost like crazy once you get into this, if you go like two or three days without it, like you actually feel like crap. Like you oh, can't yeah, get your yeah, motor running, sure. and you're like, all right. So yeah, uh, it becomes kind of a, a self fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. You need to go do it. I know but, what you mean. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so you're like, this is pretty cool for me too to have you here on my first like first podcast because like <laughs> you're the king of the hammers, right? Yeah. It's been two years in a row, and then even you told me this before, even before you won this this last time, and you're like, you know, we're going and. I'm going to have a good time and, you know, it's going to be hard, but, you know, no expectations, right? And uh, and you everything went well and you, you pull it off and then you win in the second year in a row for your third time win, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so it's pretty cool. It's really it's, – it's a big deal. Uh, sometimes people don't really know and they don't really – you know, if they're not into like the, uh, the off-road racing and they don't follow and everything, you know, um, they see you and you're just like a you know, normal guy, you know, just – Well, and it's tricky because it's like you're like, oh, it's a big deal, but it's like – I mean, it's a big deal. It's it's a it's a heck of an accomplishment. Like for totally, us, totally, yeah. I know for the outside world, it doesn't follow it and stuff. It, it, it they're probably like, oh, that's cute, you know, like you <laughs> won a little race yeah. with your car. But I, it, it's still like to me, it's such a cool thing because in life, you know, you can you can find some challenges. Like, yeah. and, and this one was one of those that we found to be a total challenge. Like, I didn't have a racing background. I loved riding dirt bikes and I liked the Jeep stuff. And we were always going on rock crawling trails, Rubicon, and all the stuff. But when we, you know got into racing like we were pretty green we didn't really know anything about it yeah we certainly didn't know how to drive in a desert like at speed and so you know it's been a, a really fun education to try to get yourself totally. up to speed learn the skill and the craft and then try to go out and and check the box where you're like do we want it and then we backed it up and won it again and um i mean i guess three times but it's a uh, it's cool it's a good feeling of accomplishment yeah. you know and 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 
what, I was here on Monday after we won, right? Yeah, totally. Ready yeah. to go get in shape and stay in shape and be ready for the next year. <laughs> recover you know? from the actual race. Come work out, keep moving so you can recover. Actually, I needed some active recovery because I was pretty If you just up. do nothing, right, you probably like well, start hurting even more. It, it, it definitely, I mean, you, you take some shots. Like yeah. you take some shots and, and, totally. and you're sore. I mean, you know, they're, they're like really, it's like one of those things that I think, you know, it probably beats people up like really bad. I, there's a few like funny ones, but like having that core strength, it doesn't beat you up so bad that you're like screwed up. It beats it just it just makes you yeah. sore. Well, it's like I tell people it's like when you work out, you build in your strength because it's your I mean it's your your armor, right? Yeah. Whatever you do, you know, if you're stronger and you're you know you're mobile and you can move and everything is gonna you know help you go through a lot of stuff. And you're it's a good example like you 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 know racing and you can get through a lot of stuff pretty well. Yeah. And I mean I'm sure it's a big part of like you winning because you're able to keep that pace right, keep moving without having to slow down right. Oh, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So. You know, before yeah, we wrap up and everything, um, I want to um, talk a little bit about like, your, your, you know, talking about the race and what you do and the church and everything. But you're just, you know, you're, you're pretty cool. I've known you for a while now. And you're <laughs> super cool. And um, so what what are the uh, the things you like to do just for like for fun that you do? Like people don't know that you're like, oh, this is what I do. And like, how do you keep yourself, you know, kind of stress-free and entertain, entertain um, besides, you know, you doing your racing and all this stuff? Well, I mean, that's a good question. You know, I, so I've got two awesome kids. My daughter was uh, super, in, she is super into horses, right? So we, you know, we go out there and I, I watch her and, man, I watched her get bucked off. And, and it was terrible because she gets bucked off and she just goes limp like ragdoll, you know, falling through the air, lands flat on her back on the ground. And I'm like, horse is pretty tall too. I mean, the whole thing's gnarly. I mean, you know, I grew up riding dirt bikes. You fall off a dirt bike, usually low side and you're only oh, yeah. like a foot away from the ground. She was, you know, what, four or five feet up from there. Gets bucked off probably over the top of the height of the head, which is, you know, 16 hands high or whatever. And then just, bam, ragdoll. And I'm like, dude, you're not you're not going to ride horses and not do something to get better physically at this. Yeah. So I gave her two choices. I'm like, I think gymnastics would be good or CrossFit. And I'm like, you choose because one of them has to happen. You have to, you have to get the ability to rotate in the air. I'd ideally like you to find the strength and the skill and the core strength to be able to just not get bucked off. Have right? more control. Yeah. Yep. She shows CrossFit. She loves it. She comes in. She sees your wife, Whitney. She, you know, she gets excited. She comes in here and she is so happy. But the transformation of her in like the last year, I mean, she's strong. She's a 10 year old and she's strong. Like, yeah, she's not like, I mean, I, it's just trippy because, you know, she's not just a little 10 year old girl that is like, you know, not capable of doing stuff. Yeah. And I mean, in that same year, she's gone from getting bucked off of her horse to now she's getting paid to ride other people's horses, you know, and train and do all this stuff. I mean, the other day she came to me and she's like, you know, I've done a lot of training with my horse. I think it's worth a lot more than we bought it for. And I'd like to sell an upgrade. And I'm oh, like, really? oh my gosh, now you're a horse trader, you know, <laughs> <laughs> everything's cool. transforming. Right. But it's like, you know, she's really into it. And I'm super proud of her. And then my son, Jackson, he comes in here. Um, I think he just wants to run around. I mean, he just yeah. needs to get his energy out. And he comes yeah, yeah. out, he's covered in sweat. He's just happy as a clam. And I'm like, good, I'm glad you love it. Cause you know, we, I love it. I'm just yeah, glad yeah. to see him love it. Um, but you know, it's really cool. And he's a dirt bike kid, man. He wants to ride that dirt bike every day. That's so cool. Yeah. And, uh, I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty impressive too. Yeah. I mean, for his age, he's six and he's ripping wheelies and hitting doubles. So I That's mean, he's, he's good. You yeah. know, and, and, and uh, the passion of love, like he just absolutely yeah. loves it. So, um, and, and it's trippy because, you know, I, I come home and I was always going to be like, you know, I don't know, at this age of life, were you going to come home and be like, let's go ride dirt bikes? I don't know. I don't think so. Like if I look at a lot of my friends that are kind of my age, like they come home, they turn on the TV and watch yeah. something, you know, he's like, let's go ride. I'm like, hell yeah. You know, so That's I feel good, good yeah, about, for sure. you know, being fit and wanting to hang out with yeah. them and That's crazy, do all that man. stuff. So it's like everything kind of a good jam on that whole yeah. side of things. Um, You know, my wife, obviously, like I didn't talk about it, but like she... You know, she's pretty private, but like, she just, she loves going out and camping and snowmobiling and doing all the stuff. Like she wants to be out there with all of this too. Oh, you share, like, she the rides same. the horses. She does all the yeah. stuff, you know what I mean? And so, um, it's perfect, but yeah, it's just super cool that it's all worked out that That's way. That's pretty cool, dude. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming, dude. I appreciate yeah. it. I'm stoked to be on the show. And, yeah. Uh, thanks for doing love this. Love to do it again. We'll have you, we'll have you again. Yeah. All we'll have you again. We got a lot more to talk about, but, um, we'll leave it for, for one, one, another, another episode. Cool. Sounds thanks, good. Thanks buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks cool. so much.